Well, hello everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. Today is an extra special day because it's not only the last day of Stamptember, but it is the reveal of Tim Holtz's Stamptember exclusive collaboration set with Simon Says Stamp, and I can't wait to show it to you and show you what I made because it's a really good set. So the collaboration has a few items in it, actually. It's a really great value. You get the large stamp set that features all sorts of festive imagery. You get two stencils, and you also get two jars of Tim Holtz paste. So you get a grit glow paste and a sparkle paste, which is fantastic. I have the stamp set on my desk, and I'm going to be using the stamp set with Simon Says Stamps coordinating dies. Simon designed dies that actually can cut out the stamp set and those are available as a separate purchase and are only available while supplies last just like the stamp set so all of these products are limited edition just like any other stamp timber exclusive so here are the stencils they're super cute i love that there's both snow flurries and stars and then of course we have the pace so i'm going to be using all of these products on a combination of different projects Two of them are tags. I've also got a gift card holder. And finally, I'm going to show you the mixed media piece I made at the very end. So stay tuned. We're gonna start first with the tags. I have this Tim Holtz tag die set here. And by the way, all the products that I'm mentioning today, you'll be able to find them in the video description or there's picture links over on my blog. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in anything. I'm going to die cut the largest tag from one of Tim Holtz's holiday backdrops going to give me a nice background for my Santa. I want to stamp Santa with intense black ink onto some watercolor paper because I am going to do some watercoloring with distress inks. Simon's intense black ink is great for working with watercolors. Now because I am stamping onto Tim Holtz watercolor paper it's super textured so I do want to stamp a couple times to make sure I get a really good impression and all of the areas on that textured paper are stamped well. Once my stamping was complete, then I'm going to start watercoloring. And I've picked out a couple of different colors for each area of my image. So I'm starting first with candied apple and also aged mahogany. Those are the colors I used for any of the red areas. For Santa's bag of toys, I colored that with salvage patina and also pine needle. I love how these two combine together to create a really nice green. I was really trying to match my colors to the colors that are in that holiday backdrop that I picked out. Those fun candy canes are also going to be inspiring my project. For Santa's beard, I decided to do something fun and use a Distress Mica Stain. So I just spritzed that on my glass board and then blended that out to color him in. And here we're going to take the coordinating dies and cut the Santa out. So I'm going to use very, very low tack tape from Simon's Stamp to hold this die in place as I run this through my die cut machine. That's going to give me this great image that I can now put on top of my tag. I always like putting another tag on the back side of my tags because it not only gives me some place to write, but if you have like a pattern paper that has patterns on either side, like this holiday backdrops, it gives you a nice simple surface on the back side too. And if you get the back side inky, you can also hide all that inky mess with the new tag that you put on the back. All right, here's where we're gonna get fun with paste. So I pulled out one of the stencils. This is the snow flurry one, and I'm going to use the sparkle paste to apply this on top of my tag. And this isn't gonna be readily noticeable at first because this dries clear, of course. So we're just gonna have the sparkle initially, but we're gonna add some ink blending and make that stand out. So once that dried, I brought in some of that red distress ink and I'm going to go ahead and just put that along the edges of my tag. So the paste is gonna resist that ink. I can buff off any of the excess with a cloth to make those snow flurries stand back out. And so now they sparkle on top of our tag, which I think is really fun. It also adds some contrast here. Using some Distress Mica Stain, I'm going to splatter that across my tag. I love this bright red color. It's one of the new holiday Distress Mica Stains for 2023. Off camera, I did make this bow with Tim Holtz's Deck the Halls die set. I'm going to ink blend on top of the bow that I created here from some cardstock with some Simon Says Stamp Cherry ink. I wanted it to have some dimension and some darker areas. So by using the ink blending, that gave it a little bit more oomph. And then to really make it stand out, I put some sparkle paste on top of it. So this is gonna give it a glossy finish and it'll be clear, so it'll really enhance those red colors, but it will still provide that sparkle, which is gonna look so cool on the finish tag. So I just applied that on top of a coffee filter here just to catch the excess, and I'll let that dry. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to take some Ideology candy canes, dip them in a little bit of collage medium, rub that around so that it goes all the way down the side of my candy cane, and I'm going to cover that with glitter. So these will look frosted, which I think is super fun. It almost gives them like a candy coat feel. So I did that for both of the candy canes that I'm going to be sticking on top of this tag. Like I said, that candy cane background was definitely the inspiration for what went on to this tag. And I'm going to put Santa right along the middle section of the tag. You can see where the candy canes and the bow are going to go down along the bottom. You know, I get questions all the time, like, what would you do with these really large tags? You could use them as decor if you want, but I love putting them on my gifts for Christmas. When I give my gifts for Christmas, people love something unexpected, like a giant tag like this, or something really beautiful, even if it's not giant. A beautiful handmade tag is always very much appreciated by the recipients. So don't be afraid to put your artwork on the tag. Trust me, the recipients always keep it. So after I've been gluing all these pieces down, I did use a lot of red line tape for some of this. That works really good for attaching mixed media type elements like the candy canes onto your project. I did add a little bit of sparkle to Santa's hat. I always love that with the holidays coming around, I can really get crazy with the sparkle because I love glitter. I did add a couple little greenery elements from another Tim Holtz die set. Those are gonna just gonna accent around the tag. Now this ephemera piece I pulled out of an ideology pack, one of Tim's Christmas sets, and I love this tag that said, this sack contains a special delivery. Couldn't resist using it with this particular piece. So I distressed it a little bit, added a little bit of ink, so that way it gave it that worn feel, and I just tucked it underneath the bow, and I just held it down with a couple pieces of foam tape to give it some lift. On top of that berry, I did make sure to add a little bit of glossy accents for some shine. Especially since we had that shiny bow, we definitely want to add some shine to the berry so that way it stands out too. There are some amazing greetings in the Tim Holtz Stamp Timber collaboration set. I couldn't decide which ones to use. It was always so hard to pick, but I finally ended up choosing this Merry and Bright greeting for the Santa tag, but there's some really good ones in this set. I'd finished off my tag by adding a little bit of green ribbon across the top. That ties in nicely with all the red, breaks things up a little bit. So there we have it, tag number one, which is super festive. So we're gonna go from festive now to fun. I love this tag. When I look at this tag, it reminds me of a ski lodge, and I think it is super cozy. The really fun part about this tag, it glows in the dark, and I'll show you. So we're gonna start first by die cutting another one of those large tags from some Tim Holtz holiday backdrops. I actually turned this one on an angle because I liked the little bit of an angle pattern here. I thought that was fun. I did stamp the snowflake image from the stamp set with some black ink onto this tag, putting it on the two corners. And then I'm also going to bring in the grit glow paste that you get with the Stamp Timber collab. So I'm going to apply that grit paste on the corners like I did for the snowflakes and I'm overlapping these. This is really fun to be able to overlap stuff like this. And I'm just going to apply that paste very gently through the stencil so that way I can get these really fun glow in the dark stars and I'll show you what it looks like once the paste has dried, but it is so cool. So while that's drying, let's make our snowman. I stamped him also onto watercolor paper with intense black ink, so that way I can watercolor him as well with distress inks. I love watercoloring with distress inks. I don't do it often enough. So making this series of projects was a lot of fun for me to be able to break out some techniques that I haven't done in a while. So for his adorable bucket hat, I colored that with the same reds I used for Santa. I used some yellow and brown to color in his broomstick. And I also used that same mica stain to color in the snowman body for a little bit of sparkle. So here's one of those fun greetings. I made this, no you can't return it. I think that's just so cute. My idea was I had this tag from a Tim Holtz ideology ephemera pack and I thought I would stamp this greeting onto that tag and then layer this up behind the main snowman tag. So it's kind of a layered effect here, which I think is fun. I embellish the tag, make it festive here with some snowflakes from the stamp set. So similar concept to what I did for the main tag, but this time I'm stamping them in red. And then on this tag, I'm actually going to apply the sparkle paste. Again, I'm overlapping it with my stamping, but that's okay. It looks super fun and it adds some really cool dimension here to your project. So I did this on both corners of the tag. Always make sure you clean your stencils in between your projects. You don't want that paste to dry on them. I pulled out more holiday ephemera from Tim Holtz Ideology, including one of these vellum pieces. These are actually retired, I believe now, but I had some in my stash still, so I thought I'd use one of them for the backdrop of this frame. 
I pop that up onto the center of my tag. I'll pop the snowman up on top of that. And then we're going to ground him because he looks like he's floating here and I really don't want that. I do want to use that compliment of the season ephemera piece too. But here's where we're going to ground the snowman. I pulled out the snowbank stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm going to apply white grit paste. This is opaque on top of the snowman and the frame with that stencil. And so when I peel this off, you're going to see he's now sitting in the snow, which looks so much more appropriate. I'm going to make that snow sparkle by adding some Distress Clear Rock Candy on top of that. I love Clear Rock Candy. I use it all the time for my holiday projects, that and Mica Flakes. Okay, so we got snow on the bottom. We need snow up top. So I thought I would use one of Tim's fanciful snowflake dies. I cut it from some of his silver glitter cardstock and I'm gonna glue that right above the snowman. It's one large snowflake, but it ties everything in really nicely, adds a nice punch along the top of the tag. And then we're just going to tie our two tags together once everything is completely dry. So that way we have this fun layering effect. And I did put some dark green cardstock behind my plaid tag just to give it a nice clean surface on the back side. And here's where you can see after we tie these together, it looks fantastic to have the secondary tag layered up behind the snowman, add something a little bit of fun and unexpected. And I love the greeting that goes on it. All right, so here we go. We have tag number two complete. I promised you I was gonna show you what it looked like when you turn the lights off. So here we go. Check out those stars. I think it's just so much fun. I used some grip paste a little while ago with a Halloween stencil that I designed for Simon Says Stamp. So I'll link to that in the top right corner so you can check it out. It's another fun way to use this grip paste, but I love that it's included in the Stamptember collab because you can have so much fun making some cool night sky projects or just unexpected little touches like this. Imagine this sitting under your Christmas tree for somebody to find. I think it is so much fun for somebody to find a glowing tag on their gift. I don't know, just me, but I think it's cool. Okay, speaking of gifts, we always like to give gift cards for the holiday season. So I thought I would make a gift card holder. The reindeer in this Stamptember exclusive is just too cute. I wanted to stamp him and use him with the new Big Tidings die set from Tim Holtz. So that's what we're gonna do here. But first we need to actually make the gift card envelope. So I'm going to use Tim's collector die set. I'm gonna use the envelope from that set. We're gonna die cut it from Savellum and I'm gonna use it with these two stencils. So on the left is a CZ Design and Simon's Stamp simple pattern stencil. And on the right is Tim's new sticks stencil. I watched him do this technique on a live and I thought it was so much fun. So I wanted to try it for myself. I need to build my envelope first before I show you the technique. So I'm going to fold on all of the score lines that are created when you die cut the envelope, give them a nice crease, and I'll just use some tape to hold everything together. All right, so here's the technique. You take the stick stencil. It's really fun and I'm trying to figure out my exact placement of where I want these candy cane stripes that we're gonna make to be positioned on my envelope. I'm gonna tape it in place once I've decided where I want it. Then you're gonna take a stripe stencil. Now Tim used one of his, but I don't have that stencil. So I found a stripe stencil I had in my stash from Simon and I'm going to stick that stencil on top of the sticks. There's a lot of sticks happening here, but hopefully you're following along. Anyway, you're layering these two stencils together so that way you can ink blend through the stencils and what you're making are stripes and not just any stripes, candy cane stripes. So through these two stencils, I'm applying some Simon Says Stamp Cherry Ink with a blending brush and I'm trying to make sure I go in the motion of the stripes so that way we don't lift any of the stencils up by accident. We'll remove only one stencil, just the first stripe stencil that we put on top. Remove that, but don't remove the stick stencil yet. So now we have the stick stencil still in place and we're going to bring in the sparkle paste and we're going to apply that through this stencil that's still attached to our envelope. Now what is gonna happen is this will dry and it will give a beautiful candy striped background. When I saw Tim do this on the live, I was like, I have to try this. Look at this, isn't this fun? Now it's a little milky right now, but once this dries, it'll be completely clear and this will look like literally like candy ribbon. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and watercolor my reindeer. I used some salvage patina, pine needles, and rustic wilderness to color in the wreath. For the reindeer himself, I'm going to just use some simple gathered twigs and I'll just fade that out as it goes to some of the areas where I want it to be a little lighter. And of course, I'll use those same reds that I used for Santa and the snowman. And the other ornaments that are on this wreath, I just used some wild honey and also salvage patina. 
Grand Espresso was the perfect color to use for his antlers. And then finally, once everything dried, I brought in some white gel pen and I just added some little dots to the wreath just to kind of fill it in a little bit. And I also added some highlights to the nose and the ornaments. So here are the coordinating dies for the reindeer. I'm gonna line that up, hold it in place with my very, very low tack tape. It's great tape from Simon. I use it all the time for my die cuts. Once my image was die cut, I used glossy accents to put on top of the ornaments. But of course, you also have to put it on the nose. I made him look like Rudolph, you got to. Here's my envelope. So it dried and you can see that fun candy cane ribbon-like pattern on the edges, which I think is super fun. And I'm going to apply grip paste, white opaque grip paste on top of the envelope to give it a frosty finish. And then I'll put some clear rock candy on top of that to give it some sparkle. I'll let that dry. That did take a while because there was a lot of paste. But while we're waiting, we'll just go ahead and work on making the card that's going into the envelope. So I'm going to make a background here with some Distress Mica Stain. This happens to be Wonderland. I love this color. I'm taking some watercolor paper from Tim Holtz and some water. I'm spritzing it onto this little clear plastic piece that I'm going to use as a carrier sheet to do some ink smushing. Distress Mica Stains are really fun for ink smushing because they have a shimmer when they're dry, which I think is really pretty. So I created some fun texture here, added some dots, and now I have this fun background that I can cut down and use as both a card panel and I'm also gonna make a little mini tag out of it too. I did dry this really, really well because I did wanna add some water splatters. So once it dried, then I took some plain water, reacted that distressed mica stain so I can get that fun splatter effect. And of course I'll dry it again. Also add some intense splatters with the mica stain itself so I get some nice bright, deep color. So my little card is about the same size as a gift card. It's about two and a quarter by three and a half. And it fits perfectly inside the Tim Holtz envelope. And you can see my gift card also fits inside. And I picked a reindeer one to coordinate. I think that was fun too. On this card, I'm gonna keep it really simple because I want the star of the show to be the envelope, which is clear, of course. So you're gonna see this card in between. So all I did was stamp a simple sentiment. And then I stamped tone on tone snowflakes with the stamp set using some Simon Says Stamp ink that matched really, really well. So I just added a grouping of four around my greeting and then finished things up with some white grit paste through the Snow Flurry stencil. This will add a nice frosty white finish to the card and it'll also tie in the snow that's on the envelope. So that way everything has a very cohesive look. So here is that really fun big tidings set that I was talking about. I love this joy, I think it's super fun. I die cut it from some red cardstock and then I ink blended along the bottom with some cherry ink from Simon to give it some dimension. And then I'm going to attach that same stripe stencil that I used earlier from the simple pattern set from Simon to apply a striped pattern to this as well. So I'm going to use that same sparkle paste. This will dry clear of course, so it's just gonna add some nice glossy stripes with a little bit of sparkle on top of this joy. I let that dry and once it was dry, I took my scissors and cut the O out because I want the reindeer to actually be the O. And he's a little bit larger than the O itself, so I need some space. So we're gonna cut the letters apart and space them out a little bit more so that he can fit right in the middle. I think that's gonna be super cute. I attached him and the letters with some foam tape. I also wanted to add a greeting to the tag. So I die cut one of these tiny little tags from the collector set. And I love this sentiment, Dear Santa, define good. I stamped it with some black ink onto this tag and we're just gonna tie this tag onto the Y of my gift card envelope. So that's really cute. And it adds a nice little touch to the finished project. I could not resist adding a seal to this envelope. So I pulled out the Tim Holtz remnant rubs and I'm going to go ahead and put this onto a little circle that I die cut from some white cardstock. I'll remove the release paper here so we can have our cute little seal, which will go on top of this seal that I found in an ephemera pack. I did enhance it a little bit by adding some ink blending around the edges so that way it gives it that nice rich Christmas red feel and a little bit of a glow. Put my little seal on top of that and I attached it to the envelope flap. It looks really, really nice and it brings everything together. So here we go, we're gonna put our envelope inside so I can show you how this looks. You can see that nice blue color through the envelope. You got the candy stripes, the snow, but the card isn't too crazy so that it's actually distracting from the rest of the envelope. So you wanna make sure you put your gift card in there before you close everything up, but there you go. Another fun way to be able to use this set. Okay, 
I want to save the best for last. This is my favorite project that I made with the Tim Holtz collaboration set. I do not have this project on camera. Like I don't have a tutorial to show you, but I have pictures and I want to share with you what I made. So I had this idea to make a storefront and I went to town putting this together. It lights up. I use tiny lights to put inside the window, which has some of the fun imagery from the stamp set inside the window, which is a Tim Holtz ideology product. So is the door. And I think it's just super magical. There are so many pieces I added to this project. There's icicles, there's little candy canes and little peppermints. I've got snow on all the little window ledges. I made some fun garland with Tim's garland and some of his fun baubles. There's a lot of great pieces on this project and it took a lot of time to put together. You'll notice I have some fun accents, like I made a chimney out of some paper and also some Tim Holtz, etc. pieces. Actually, these are trash, etc. pieces that were left over from actual shapes. And I just cut them down so that way they would fit on my project as a chimney with a little bit of smoke. Super fun. I even added little jingle bells to the stocking. There's a little snowman and I put snow on all of the areas where I felt like if snow was falling, it would be landing there. This frame piece that I had, it's actually just one of those little clipboard frames that I had had in my stash and I thought it would be the perfect base to create this project. So I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the projects that I've shared today. Details about each of the projects you can find over on my blog, including still pictures. So that way, if you want to see things up close and in more detail, you can see it all there. I have a link in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube to go to my blog. And I also have links to all of the products, including the Stamp Timber collaboration set from Tim Holtz and Simon's the Stamp that's only available while supplies last. So if you want to get it, you're going to want to grab it while you can. All the other products that I use today are products that are available all the year round. So if you are watching this after the collaboration set has sold out, you can still purchase a lot of these products on their own. So thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it so much. It was a long one, but thank you for sticking in and watching to the end. I will be back very soon to share more with you all, but until then, I hope you have a wonderful day.